در مثلا اون چیزایی که برای خود خانواده من پیش اومده میدونم که خیلی کسایی که اینجا نشستن و در ایران یعنی زندگی کردن از چیزایی که من نمیشتم اینجا خیلی بیشتر براشون پیش اومده و یعنی سختی های بیشتری کشیدن ولی من اینجا چیزی که من خودم لمس کردم و سختی های که من خودم لمس کردم و میدونم در برش نوشتم و خیلی که میدونم در آمریکا پرسنال تستمانی خیلی خیلی آدم ها رو با آدم ها مثلا رابطه برقرار می کنم و خب شروع کنم Let the world turn their backs, for even if they do, and even if the guilty walk free today, my truth does not disappear. I'm here to testify. Let the world shut their ears, stand apathetically watching, refuse to answer my calls, ignore or ridicule me, I confess. When the reports of systematic rape of teenage boys and girls arrive on my computer screen, when the overwhelming sense of helplessness catches on like a virus by an overdose of YouTube scenes, overcoming gravity seems much more sensible than carrying on. I feel awfully heavy. I'm here to speak my truth, the kind of truth that twists and turns in my stomach like a clay, takes the shape of multilateral knives, cuts my flesh, the kind of truth that erupts like a volcano, explosions of acid in my being, burning in my throat, chokes my need to say, ignorance is bliss. The kind of truth that bleeds through hope, flees, tire trap, prints through my sleepless nights of following news reports, weaves into my dreams and manifests into nightmares of strangers begging for mercy. The kind of truth that is triggered like a roadside bomb and before I could ask where is their vote, I had to ask where are their bodies. I'm here to speak my truth and the guilty may walk free today, but not for long. And in the meantime, I pace up and down, up and down for justice like the mothers outside of being. Pace frantically, desperate to hear from their innocent children. But just because I'm waiting does not mean I will remain silent, for I'm going to shout. I will shout the truth until someone hears me. I will paint the picture of you, the guilty, until you are identified. I will point you out until they unmask you. I will write, speak, shout, even cry. Defend my truth with every fiber of my being. You cannot stop me. I'm going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger like a dying star, ready to explode. I will spread the truth until the world is forced to open their eyes, until the world can no longer shake your hands without feeling guilty. This stage is my court of law. I would present one of many, one too many. I'm just one from thousands and thousands and thousands. They say that when the atom bomb was dropped, those who lived even kilometers away suffered just the same. At times, vicarious vision can be blinding. I'm a witness. I witnessed my mother and father. They were blindfolded witnesses in black execution fabrics and the scare tactics of the 1980s, the prison stories printed in the back of my eyelids. I witnessed my mother refusing to born, mourn the fetus you killed under torture because she didn't want to seem weak, only that now that unborn baby is haunting us in romantic reveries. I witnessed my mother clutching to her womb, trying to protect me as they beat her, didn't allow her to bathe, to eat, to sleep. She didn't want to lose me. Prison terms are not passed on through genes, but how free is the child of a prisoner? I witnessed the Iran that the regime of the Islamic Republic created. And I would like to think that you and I do not originate from the same earth. That you and I do not originate from the same earth. I would like to think that the blood that runs through me 
The humanity that makes me flesh makes you a monster. At the age of six, my parents were taken into interrogation because I broke into a revolutionary song in the back of a public bus from Karach to Tehran singing, while my parents were in custody, I was taken into a back room, questioned about the company we keep, about the songs we sing, and the meetings we hold in a country where child execution is legal. Child, child interrogation is not even a human rights violation. At the age of six, I learned that I really didn't have some 25 uncles and 33 cousins and 55 aunts. I confess I gave away more information than my parents would under torture. And the guilt grew like a parasitic war inside of me and began eating me alive. But you are the guilty one. You kicked your boots into my father's face and broke his jawbones. And though he never once complains about the 18 months he nearly starved to death because he couldn't eat, his tilted, stern expression when I fix his tie in the morning, his permanent disfiguration reminds me that you walk unpunished and he walks with history written on his body. I have witnessed witnessed refugee homes and running away and hiding at the age of nine and displaced hearts and living in exile and being without uncles and aunts and grandparents and mother tongues and even in a free land still being a fearful because of the threat of your trigger for you have killed many of us while in refuge but I will not let my unborn babies carry your guilt on their shoulders my memories, the knowledge of my parents' failed revolution should not be their burden and travesty. So even if you walk free today, don't forget to remember that I will keep on shouting and shouting. Someone will hear me, the blind will begin to see the picture I'm painting, and when my babies are born, I know which way the pendulum of history will be swinging. Your time is ending. Okay.